the healing at the pool of Bethesda. In the heart of Jerusalem, near the Sheep Gate, there was a pool known in Hebrew as Bethesda. This pool, surrounded by five covered colonnades, had a reputation that drew many from across the region. It was believed that at certain times, an angel would come down and stir the waters, and the first person to enter the pool after the stirring would be healed of their affliction. Because of this, the area around the pool was often filled with people who were blind, lame, and paralyzed, each clinging to the hope that they might be the next to receive a miracle. Among these many sufferers was a man who had been paralyzed for 38 years. Every day, he lay on his mat beside the pool, watching helplessly as others around him scrambled to enter the water whenever it seemed to move. Yet each time, someone else would reach the pool before him, and with no one to help him, his chances of being healed seemed more distant with every passing year. The man's prolonged suffering, together with his inability to reach the pool, suggests a deep sense of hopelessness and surrender. Some scholars observe that the man's condition reflects not just physical paralysis but also a paralysis of hope, common among those who have been suffering for so long that they give up hope and the possibility of being healed. One day, during a Jewish festival, Jesus came to Jerusalem. As he walked through the city, he came to the pool of Bethesda. Seeing the large crowd of suffering people gathered around the pool, Jesus noticed the paralyzed man lying on his mat. His weary face, marked by years of suffering, drew Jesus' attention. Knowing the man's condition and understanding his deep despair, Jesus approached him and asked, Do you want to be made well? The question Jesus poses is weighty and reflective. Some point out that Jesus' question, Do you want to be made well? is not merely about physical healing. It confronts the man to think of his own willingness to be made whole, a process that could involve significant changes in his life. This question, therefore, serves as both an invitation and a test of the man's faith. The man looked up at Jesus, his eyes reflecting a mixture of hope and resignation. Sir, he replied, I have no one to help me into the pool when the water is stirred. While I am trying to get in, someone else always goes down ahead of me. This response highlights the man's sense of isolation and helplessness. As theologians note, the man's words reveal a belief in a superstitious tradition, yet they also expose his deep loneliness. He has no one to assist him in his time of need. Others argue that this interaction reflects the broader theme of John's Gospel, that Jesus often reaches out to those who have been marginalized or forgotten by society. Jesus, looking at the man with compassion, spoke with calm authority. Get up, pick up your mat and walk. In that moment, something miraculous happened. The man felt strength returning to his body, strength he hadn't known in nearly four decades. Slowly, he began to move. He pushed himself up, astonished that his legs were now strong enough to hold him. Standing up straight for the first time in years, he bent down, rolled up his mat, and began to walk. The immediacy of the healing is significant. The man's instant recovery illustrates the power of Jesus' word. Unlike the waters of Bethesda, which required a race to be the first, Jesus' command brought healing directly and without delay. This demonstrates Jesus' authority over illness and even over the perceived healing properties of the pool. As the man walked through the city streets, his heart filled with joy and wonder, he was soon confronted by some Jewish leaders. Seeing him carrying his mat, they frowned and said, It is the Sabbath, the law forbids you to carry your mat. The man, still overwhelmed by what had just happened, replied, The man who made me well told me to pick up my mat and walk. The leaders, puzzled and perhaps a bit suspicious, asked, Who is this man who told you to pick it up and walk? According to scholars, the reaction of the Jewish leaders is telling of their priorities. Their concern is not the miraculous healing but rather the perceived violation of the Sabbath law. This reflects a larger tension in John's Gospel between Jesus and the Jewish authorities, who are portrayed as rigidly adhering to the law while missing its deeper, life-giving purpose. The man glanced around, but Jesus had already disappeared into the crowd. The man had no idea who Jesus was, but he knew he had been healed, and that was enough for him. Later. The man went to the temple, perhaps to give thanks for his miraculous healing. It was there that Jesus found him again. Approaching him privately, Jesus said, 
See, you are well again. Stop sinning, or something worse may happen to you. Some scholars interpret Jesus' warning as a reminder that physical healing is only part of the restoration Jesus offers. The call to stop sinning suggests that spiritual wholeness and moral responsibility are integral to the new life that Jesus offers. Moreover, this encounter in the temple signifies Jesus' role not just as a healer but as one who addresses the deeper issues of sin and its consequences. The man listened carefully to Jesus' words, understanding that his physical healing was only part of what he needed. With gratitude in his heart, he left the temple and soon after told the Jewish leaders that it was Jesus who had made him well. Theologians often discuss the significance of the man identifying Jesus to the authorities. They point out that this act could be seen as a testimony to Jesus' power, but it also foreshadows the growing conflict between Jesus and the religious leaders. This healing, performed on the Sabbath, becomes a pivotal moment in John's Gospel, illustrating the clash between Jesus' ministry and the rigid interpretations of the law by the Jewish authorities. And so, the story of the man healed at the Pool of Bethesda spread throughout Jerusalem. This miracle was yet another sign of Jesus' power and compassion, but it also deepened the tension between him and the religious leaders, who were increasingly troubled by his authority and the influence he wielded.